Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is a disorder of young infants in which hypertrophy of the circular layer of the pylorus leads to gastric outlet obstruction and forceful vomiting of non-bilious emesis. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis occurs in approximately 1 to 4 per 1,000 live births with a male predominance. Other risk factors include prematurity, maternal smoking during pregnancy, family history, use of macrolide antibiotics such as erythromycin, and firstborn children. Symptoms occur between weeks 2 to 8 of life with classic presentation of immediate postprandial vomiting, which is non-bilious and forceful. Occasionally on physical exam, a pathognomonic olive-like mass can be palpated in the right upper quadrant. Laboratory evaluation classically shows a hypokalemic, hypochloremic, metabolic alkalosis due to the loss of large amounts of gastric hydrochloric acid and potential hypovolemia. The presence of bilious emesis does not rule out pyloric stenosis. However, it should raise concern for more distal obstruction such as malrotation with or without midgut volvulus. Pyloric stenosis may also be difficult to distinguish from gastroesophageal reflux, in which episodes of emesis are postprandial but not forceful. Ultrasound is the diagnostic tool of choice with sensitivity and specificity above 95%. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is characterized by the classic target sign on a transverse view. Criteria for a positive ultrasound include pyloric muscle thickness of 4 or more millimeters and a pyloric channel length of 16 millimeters or greater. Timing of surgery depends upon the clinical status of the infant and should be delayed in the setting of dehydration or electrolyte derangements. Infants presenting with normal electrolyte values and no dehydration should receive maintenance intravenous fluids such as 5% dextrose with one half normal saline and 10 to 20 mL equivalents of potassium chloride per liter. Infants with moderate or severe dehydration require more intensive fluid management with higher rates of administration. If alkalosis is not corrected prior to surgery, it has been associated with an increased risk of postoperative apnea as well as a prolonged intubation. Definitive management is with a Ramstead pyloromyotomy, which can be performed with an open or a laparoscopic approach. The laparoscopic approach is the standard of care with a faster recovery time and return to full feeding, but with a higher incomplete myotomy rate. The pyloromyotomy involves a longitudinal incision of the hypertrophic pylorus, extending from the proximal gastric end of the pyloric channel to the prepyloric vein of Mayo at the duodenal end. This is followed by blunt dissection to the level of the submucosa, allowing for it to bulge, relieving the constriction, and allowing for normal passage of stomach contents into the duodenum. At the completion of the myotomy, each side of the divided muscle is grasped and moved in opposite directions to ensure that a complete myotomy has been performed.